Build servers suck and they're laggy because everybody's building huge bases using copy paste commands. You can't record demos on most of them. People bother you. Or maybe you want to check out the stuff that's being worked on on the staging branch as an admin on your own server. Or you just want to record some cool live action cinematics. Well, I'm going to try to make this as painless as possible because there is a way that you can host your own servers for free with your own machine. Just make sure that it can handle it. 16 gigabytes of RAM DDR5 or 4 should be good enough. But if you're trying to play on super ultra max settings, you're probably going to want 32 or 64 gigs of RAM. Keep in mind, this is quite quite, you know, a lot to take in all at once. It requires a little bit of experience in coding or at least, you know, being able to read and understand what's happening. So if this ends up being too much for you to handle, maybe you could go check out the link in the description for a 30% discount on your first month with Pine Hosting by using code Drizza with three Zs. We'll talk more about this at the end of the video though. The first thing we're going to do is head over to this Rustified blog article. It's a little outdated, but it has everything you need to know and it still all works. There's also the Rust Wiki, which has a bunch of useful commands commands and a bunch of other information on this subject. On the Rustified blog article, you're going to want to find this download link and install it somewhere where you want to have this server. You're going to get this thing called steam.cmd and we're going to open that up. It's important to decide where you're going to keep this folder at because we need the file path for it and it's kind of annoying. If you move the folder, you're going to have to change something in our .bat file later down the line. So make sure that you decide right now where this is going to be and where it's going to stay. You're going to create a new folder, name it whatever you want, and drop the folder we downloaded inside of there and then open up the Steam CMD and let everything download and install. This might take a little bit for you to install and download. This footage is sped up, but once it says loading Steam API OK, you're good to go. You can close that. We're going to go back in here, open this folder. We've got a bunch of stuff in here now, but we're looking for the steam cmd.exe that we just opened. We're going to open that again. The next step from here is creating a file path for our world and all that to install into. So we're going to go over to where the steam cmd folder is, create a new folder and be careful naming it. If you name it uh, server one, there's something that's going to get automatically created with that, like your world file. So I'm going to name it Rust Server 1, and we're going to copy that, go up into the bar here, and then do a backslash with the name of the folder that we just created and copy that entire thing. Head back over to the CMD, type force underscore install underscore dir apostrophe, paste the file path, apostrophe, hit enter. And then on the next step, we're going to type in login anonymous, hit enter, and then wait for a second as it loads in. From here, you get to decide what version of Rust you're going to install. So all of them have the same beginning, which is app underscore update 258550. And then this is the default game. If you wanted to use staging, it's dash beta space staging. There's also the aux2 staging branch, which is aux02. And then there's also the aux1 branch, which is aux01 stop. But we want to be on the main staging branch, so we're going to type staging here after dash beta. And then hit enter and it'll start installing and downloading all of the files associated with the branch that you chose. This part takes a few minutes to complete and this is also how you update your server whenever Face Punch updates the game or the staging branch. So when that's done, it'll tell you great success and you can head back over into your folder and you'll see you got a bunch of stuff in here now. We're going to create a new text document and we're going to name it Rust Server with no spaces and then change the TXT to B8. T, click yes on that and now we have our starting file this is how we're going to open our server up whenever we want to use it i'll have this in the description you can paste it this is also over on the rustified blog if you want to read what everything does this part right here is the branch that you're using make sure that you typed it out correctly uh it should automatically update the game but i think you need some sort of uh, script file that i don't have i don't use it i just manually update it this can be changed to barren from procedural map this is where you can like go find the different types of maps that can generate your seed is your world seed just like minecraft change it to whatever you want this is the world size you can change this from i think it's a thousand to six thousand or something like that you can choose the amount of players that you want the description of the server the name of the server the url it's all in here if you decide to port forward your server so that people can access it that are not in the same house as you but i haven't port forwarded anything for a while so i'm sorry i can't help you out there you got to go into your router and you got to match up some numbers with the numbers that rust has you can find it on the wiki that's in the description so after you're happy with your seed your version of rust and the map size we're then going to open up 
our bat file that we created. And this is also gonna take some time. If this pops up, just click allow. And if you wanted to install Oxide, you need to be on the regular version of the game. And then you can go find some details in the description from that link. If you want to do that, it's pretty easy to set up. And when this is done, you'll see that Rust map cache thing. And sometimes it'll be red like this. Other times it'll say that Bradley is spawning. If you wanna be admin on the server, you have to do owner ID space your Steam ID. Heading back over into our folder, we can see this is our world file here. This is where you can wipe your server. This is where the player data is stored, all the blueprints and things like that. This right here is your map file. If you wanted to wipe the server of just the map, you can come in here and delete this and then reopen the server and it will create a new map for you. So we're gonna open the game because we're on the main staging branch already. In your Steam library, when you get Rust, it also comes with the staging branch. We're gonna right click it, go to properties and we're looking for the betas here. Just make sure that this is main main if you're trying to do the regular staging. Sometimes the Ox2 branch gets public, which is Facepunch's testing server for themselves. So if that ever goes public, that's where you can find that. And if you plan on using this all the time, especially if it's a staging server, you should bind the client.connect to a key. I have mine set to F5 and staging key binds and settings are unique to it, separate from the main game. So you can see this is the command right here and you can put the local host uh, URL or whatever it's called in there. There's two of them. If one doesn't work, try the other one. Sometimes they flip flop around. I don't know the reason why. So yeah, I use this every single time I connect to my local host server and I just have it set to F5. There's also the new creative commands and you need to to make sure when you're using these that you type SV in front of them. So we're going to enable these for all users. Go to the beginning, type SV space, hit enter. And then there's also the free build that we want to enable. Go to the beginning, type SV space, enter. And then the free repair is also a nice one to have enabled as well. And these basically allow you to build without having resources and repair without having resources. And then to make sure that you don't have to do this every single time, you global.write CFG type SV space in front of it. And this is because these are server variables, which is what SV stands for. You could come in here and directly type them in, but it's a little wonky. If you backspace, it's not gonna delete it. So both things do the same thing, just the in-game one requires you to type SV in front of it, and you also need to be admin, which we did earlier, which also means we can fly as soon as we load in, switch into our camera, go back, hit our keybind that we have for our smooth camera settings, and we're ready to go, shoot cinematics, test out the new features from this week, and we've also enabled our creative mode settings, so we can come in here and give ourselves a building plan and build without having to have a ton of resources in our inventory, which is extremely useful. There's also the copy-paste command that's coming soon. Make sure that you are set to global god true. Make sure that you refill your vitals. If it annoys you and you have some OCD, you can do that real easily like that. You can bind and kill to a key. I have mine set to the backspace on my mouse you can no clip you could debug camera i've got a whole ton of commands so many things that i do for my cinematics i'm going to create a whole video on it at some point it's just way too much information to all cover in one video and after that, you're good to go. This is free to use. Anybody can do this as long as your machine can handle it. It mostly depends on RAM. It is quite annoying to have to keep it updated. You have to do something with scripts for that. And if you want your friends to play on the same server with you, you have to port forward it. And it just gets super complicated and tedious, especially if you're doing this for a long time. So good news for you that Pine Hosting has given me a 30% discount for your first month with them. And I will also be getting a percentage. So if you want to support the channel, get yourself a very high quality Rust server for building demos, you know, cinematics, whatever you're gonna use it for. It's super easy to set up. It's also extremely easy to set up Oxide and go through all the mods. You can install them in one click. It's easy to keep everything updated. You don't gotta worry about digging through a ton of files. You can pretty much just set it up one time and forget about it. So make sure you check the link in the description below and use code DRIZZA with three Zs at checkout for 30% off your first month with Pine Hosting. You'll be supporting the channel and getting yourself a nice Rust server. That's all I got for you guys. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Leave a dislike if you didn't. And I'll catch you in the next one.